What's in the box? What is in the box? Let's find out together. See you on the other side. Hello and welcome to Ruckasaurus Rex, the channel where we review and discuss all things dinosaur and other prehistoric animals. How are you guys doing? As I stated in my last video, we're taking a break from the uh, Beast of the Mesozoic Tyrannosaur Series Wave 3 uh, series of reviews to bring you uh, something um, that anyone in the dinosaur model collecting community has known about and has anticipated and for me it is here I let off with the what's in the box within the box but of course if you've seen the thumbnail you already know what's in the box so um, let's just say it's from how long good and uh, the box is pretty sizable so if for some reason you didn't see the thumbnail which is impossible because you gotta click on it you already know what this is so when next we uh, come back to it you will see exactly what's in the box stand by and here it is in all its glory howling good 135 scale alamosaurus this thing is massive the box is just huge and uh, 135 scale titanosaur so you know it's got to be something. So um, let me uh, try to do what we normally do with Howlin' Good uh, product. You see the uh, you see what we got there on the front there. We actually have the uh, the image of the uh, skeleton for the Alamosaurus. You've got in the upper right as we look at it, Alamosaurus 135 scale. And the little symbol of the uh, the green plant there. You've got uh, the logo on our upper left. And as I tilt, you see how far apart my hands are. We have the uh, images of, uh, I dare say, yes, I dare say everything that uh, Howlin' Good has ever put out along with GR Toys. Because I'm seeing the Tyrannosaurus Rex from back in the day up there. There's the uh, the uh, Spinosaurus from back in the day, and of course the Carcharodontosaurus is leading the leading the charge there at the front there. But uh, yep, that's what we have. I'm not even going to uh, hold you. The same image that we have right there is in reverse on the back side. So. Uh, as far as the sides are concerned, there is zero going on on the sides. So uh, let's not even stand on ceremony. Time to get this bad boy open. From what I was told in the beginning when Almasaurus was first announced and went up for pre-order, that if you put in for the pre-orders after uh, uh, before a certain amount of time, you got a base with it. Now, I don't know if that was true about the you only get the base with the pre-orders or not. If anyone has ordered this uh, after that supposed time or now that Alamosaurus is available as an in-stock item uh, and you got a base, let me know because uh, that was probably wrong word. Anyway, th enough of that. We do have the bases you can see here. Pretty nice size. Looking at it, we've got a waterway here, a puddle of water, pool of water, and a nice sandy type of uh, type of uh, terrain there. Uh, most of the time, when they show an Alamosaurus on um, you know any of these shows, they're always in like a very dry uh, climate environment type of thing. We do have some vegetation there, as you can see. And uh, some moss with rocks. I'll turn it around. And uh, there's a footprint where you put uh, your Almasaurus. Uh, in fact, there are three. You've got uh, one here, one there. And there's one way up over here. So you do have that. And uh, from the, uh, the side, looks pretty nice right there. You've got this porthole. And the reason you have that is because it comes with this dead... Uh, tree you see the port right there so 
bringing this out. We lift it up so it can be seen. It looks like it can only go a certain way. And I'm still getting it messed up. But yeah, there it is right there. It's actually a magnet. So that's how it goes. And obviously you can pose it in either direction. I'll set that down right there because we get one other thing too. And we get an unpainted pterosaur. You can see that. We'll get a little bit close up on it. So we now close up so you can see what it is. It looks to be a Nyctosaurus to me, judging by uh, the, uh, the crest. Sometimes they're depicted uh, with just the, uh, the protrusions, and other times they're depicted with the protrusions and uh, some skin. So it looks like a sail. And uh, mine's going to remain unpainted because I'm lousy and I'm not about to mess it up. So uh, this is what you see right here. And here is the star of the show, the Alamosaurus itself. As you can uh, see, it's all of its glory. I've got, uh, I've got the model pushed all the way back. Give you an idea. I'm going to reach over so you can see how much of my arm has got to uh, be back there. You know, in order to get at him, that that was required in order to get this beast fully in frame. And uh, yeah, and as you can see, he's barely in frame. So uh, this is uh, this is quite quite the model. I can also tell you, uh, uh, along with its size, it's got some heft. It it it, it weighs something. So. Um, if any of you have been very uh, disgruntled over the shipping costs, that's because this is a, a heavy boy. It's not just a big boy. It's a heavy boy for sure. Uh, speaking of big and heavy, this uh, from from the uh, the snout, the nose, all the way to the back of the tail. You see that the tail curls. That's uh, about 21 inches 22 inches something like that it's 14 inches tall uh but um i looked up i i did some calculations myself and then to try to uh to confirm how close and accurate i could be i tried to look at you know look up how long it would be if we had that tail stretched out and um looking at uh going to the lana time shop on that store, they actually have all the measurements, the the, uh, the height, the, the length, the official length, and the uh, width. And it also has, uh, at the end of all that, the uh, they call it the curve length. In other words, if, if this animal was stretched out, if this model was stretched out from stem to stern, you'd be able to, uh, it would come out to, uh, I believe it was uh, 30... Uh, uh, nearly 31 inches, nearly 31 inches. Now, uh, this beast was uh, reported to be about 98 feet long. Now, even at the, uh, you can already tell, I can tell you right now that uh, 22, 22 inch scale, 22 inch scale, this isn't at 135th scale. If you're going to go, if you want this to be a 98 foot long creature represented in uh, plastic, it would have to be uh, 130, I want to say 137, 138th scale, something like that, to, uh, uh, to be representative of a 98 foot long animal. Uh, e uh, definitely, no matter how, how you're going about it. At the 30 inch mark, that still falls short. It comes out to 88 feet long representative. So you'd still be uh, it, it would still be kind of undersized uh, if you're trying to get to that 98 uh, foot long, uh, you know, representation. So it's still not truly 135th scale, though it is big enough. And uh, um, when you see some of the uh, the uh, critters I brought out to compare with, you'll understand why. And uh Speaking of that, I will say that uh, 2023 marked the uh, the return and the year of the 135th scale sauropod. 
And uh, even if it doesn't come as close like with the Alamosaurus here, um, it's th this is pretty, pretty dang close to the 135th scale. You know, it can be fudged. It could be, you know, it's nearly that large. At 88 feet, it only has 10 feet to go. So um, it's basically almost totally full grown. So you can go with the, uh, the sub-adult motif if you would like, but still in all, it's... Um, it's uh it, yeah it's you you would be happy you should be happy with this size in your collection and um yeah that's that's all I'm going to say about that talking about the uh color scheme it came in three different color schemes plain uh a brown and then you've got this color you got uh like blue blue a, a kind of blue bluish green gray all in there it's um a mishmash, and then when you taper off to the tail, the tail starts to redden. I'll, uh, it's going to be, uh, this is going to be, uh, an adventure, but I'm going to attempt to, uh, bring it in close for us to see a little bit better the details. So getting in real close on the head, I wanted you guys to be able to see the detail in the head because, you know, as large as sauropods are, their heads are tiny, which is hilarious to me, but um, it is what it is. But you could see what we got going on there. We've got that eye, which is basically white with a black pupil. And uh, you got some nice scales. Look at the ridge over the eye. And uh, then you've got that uh, the crest bump um, at the center of the head. And that's got some red in it. You've got the uh, the nice lips. It's uh uh, of course, the snout is uh, darker colored, and then you have some light, like a uh, caramel brown striping, and then more of that uh, greenish color. The eye, the ring on the eye is, uh, if you can see it, it's it's got some brown in it, uh, and uh, you've got the wrinkles below the eye. It looks like this critter uh, was on watch and needs some sleep. Then you've got the lower jaw. See if I can turn it like say it's this not uh this this is an adventure. Trying to get up uh, there I got out of frame. But uh I'm trying to turn it so you can see the nostril. I think you could see the, the nasal hole right there. And uh yeah, you have that and uh I'm going to zoom out just a little bit to try to get uh, the rest. That was that head there, so now you can see some of the neck. I've got the uh He's doing a balancing act on on one leg, his uh, left forelimb right there. So if it's moving around, you know why I've got to hold him up. And uh, you see the nice stripe in there. I uh, was taken by this particular color. I was going to get the other, the, uh, the, the brown one because um, to me it's more natural. But I said, you know what, I'm always getting them because of that but I can you know change it up a little bit why not so I opted for this color and uh, I wasn't going to get the plain one that plain one looks uh, it, I mean when uh, uh, when they tell you what what uh, they are you believe them that plain just looked too plain to me so yeah I didn't go with that I'm going to turn him over so you can see the neck and you see the wrinkles in the neck and it gets lighter and as we go down there's some more of those wrinkles, and you see that. That's looking pretty nice there. Look at that forelimb. And uh, nice chunky legs there, so that's cool. Muscular, have to be in order to carry all this weight. Did you know that um, in conjunction with that 98-foot estimate, it's also estimated to weigh, to have weighed 80, count them, 80, 80 tons. Big boy, for sure. And then you go down. That's looking pretty nice. You see the uh, the hooves, and uh, with Alamosaurus, I keep getting mixed up on whether or not they had thumb claws or not. I know Titanosaurus lost them, and uh, this one doesn't have them, so I'm assuming that it was meant to have lost it. And I'm thinking it did because this this uh, this species of sauropod was among the last dinosaurs to exist. So, um, you know, straight up late Cretaceous, 85 to 66 million years ago, something like that. 
So it was one of the last uh, surviving species of any dinosaur. So, you know, right there along Tyrannosaurus and everybody else. Now looking at the body, I can finally sit this down. So you can see some of the what's going on with the body. And uh, I'll try to zoom in a little bit. And uh, get it focused in so you can see the, the patterns there. Pretty nice. We'll go underbelly first since I have to lift it up for that. Got wrinkles. Got that going on. Looking from the top. Here's what's interesting. They've got these uh, spikes and scoots. Armor, basically. Which is crazy. But uh, a lot of uh, titanosaurs have been um, portrayed, pictured with these type of protrusion spikes. As some type of adaptation which is, uh, you know, why would uh, they need it? <laughs> Their sheer size alone protects them. But, of course, they have to survive long enough to get this big. Looking at the hind limb, and you see the claws painted a grayish color. Looking down there, oops, sorry, guys, got it out of focus. There's a cloaca there, so we've got that attention to detail going. And then the tail. You see the tail is curling out, and it does get red. So I'll turn it around to the other side. Oh, boy, knocking into the lights and stuff. So you can see that and move it up. And then I'm going to move it back to where I got it from, facing the other side. And I'm going to zoom out. And there is our boy in all his glory right there. Very, very nice, loving it. So um, next, let's see what he looks like on that base. All right, after a little bit of camera adjustment, we've got, uh, we've got our Alamosaurus on its base. And uh, you can, of course, if you want to have it facing the opposite direction um, without changing the base around, but this is where the uh, footprints are uh, placed so this is technically the proper way to display it um and also it you know you've got the uh the dead tree there and it's not being uh hidden from the creature's body so uh yeah you've got that um i believe the uh pterosaur there is no place to actually put it i think you're supposed to like sticky tack it or something I mean, I've got it right there. You can't see it anyway, especially since it's bleeding into my white wall there. But um, it is there. You find some way to suspend it. Uh, that'll be uh, pretty cool with that. First order of business when we're dealing with comparisons is to match our Holland Good version up with the PNSO version. And, I, and you can see the uh, considerable size difference. The PNSO version is like a 180th scale <laughs> um, of the uh, of the Alamosaurus. So that's crazy. But um, the great thing is um, it looks like it's a uh, a juvie or um, adolescent. So um, they'll still go good together. Now it's time to compare up against true. 135th scale sauropods since uh, we've been having a 135 scale party with our sauropods the past year plus and I'm here for it we're going to kick it off with the Decreosaurus from uh, it's a, a fellow company mate Howling Good and you see uh, how small the size range is between sauropods uh, you know uh, you know from from the smaller to the largest is just incredible. There were sauropods that were even smaller than Decreosaurus, like Amargosaurus. It's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, they really spanned the length range. Next, also from Howling Good, we have the Apatosaurus. And, uh, yep, yeah, and these are more or less, uh, in scale with one another. Uh, the uh, Apatosaurus is, about uh, 80 feet long itself in real life. And uh, this version of Alamosaurus is uh, representative of an 88 foot long creature. Next up, and the head is totally out of frame, we have the GR Toys Giraffe Titan. 
some say Brachiosaurus, but Giraffe Titan was a little bit more slender than a uh, Brachiosaurus. And since the head is out, especially since I've got the uh, Giraffe Titan closer up, what I will do is swap them out and see and hope for the best. I may still have to uh, do a little something. Well, no, there it is. It's showing. If I tip our Almasaurus that way, they're all in frame. So cool. Managed to get them all in frame regardless. So there you have it. And uh, you see I'm incrementally going up. The uh, Giraffe Titan was estimated to be about 85 feet long. So you see I'm getting longer. And you guys knew it had to happen. You knew the Diplodocus was coming out. This is from Rebor. And uh, this is more or less how long, if I were to stretch the tail out, of course, Diplodocus was a uh, slender built sauropod. It had the length about 97 feet long, 95 to 97 feet long, but it was uh, very lightly built. It only, only I'm saying, uh, got up to about 20 tons as opposed to that 80 ton bad boy behind it. But um, this gives you an idea if the tail uncurled, how long uh, the Alamosaurus uh, should uh, have uh, been if we wanted to get true 135 scale. And we are not done. We are not done. Not with the 135 scales. I've got one more for you, and I had to do it this way because guaranteed I'm going to have to move our Alamo boy up closer and swap places. Why? Because this guy is totally covering the Alamosaurus up. This is the PNSO Hawanga Titan. This is uh, an, an older model, and uh, it's made out of hollow vinyl, so it's pretty light. As you see, I was slinging it like, like you know, like it's nothing, because it, it's it's hollow. And uh, this is the key to making um, 135th scale sauropods. Uh, in scale and keeping the weight down to keep the cost on shipping down. So let me flip them. Let me flip them. Oh boy, the Alamosaurus is a heavy boy. I'm telling you. So I got him faced that way and get the Alamosaurus. I'll move the Alamosaurus just a little bit back because he's big himself. So he may be enveloped by the sheer bulk of the Wanga Titan, but he's got enough mass that, uh, he could be uh, seen as well. So you got that too right there. And I bet you think we're done now that we've uh, pulled out the mighty wing of Titan. But no, we're in Titan land now. So uh, we've got one more. And here he comes. Pow. Patagot Titan right there. And yes, he's out of frame because that's how big it is. So uh, let me play the switch up game now and hope he'll get in frame. Still no guarantee. That's how big this guy is. And trust me when I tell you he is in scale. I'll move him back. So his head is in frame. And now we'll put our Alamosaurus in. Oh, almost tipped him over. Can't have that. Cannot have that. Let's see if I can tip him. There we go. So now both heads are in frame, barely. Move the camera just a skosh. Yeah. Or maybe I can move uh, the potato back just a little bit. There we go. There we go. Just uh, the end of the tail is, is cut off. But there you have it. Now, while I've got these two together, um, I can tell you right now, this gives you a, 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 a decent um, account of how they matched up against one another. If you were to add about two, two and a half to three inches more on the Alamosaurus, that would put it in that uh, right 135 scale and it would be representative of a 98 foot long animal. The Patagia Titan is... Uh, it depends on uh, which estimate you want to go with. They were estimated to be about 110 to 122 feet long. So you see where that size difference is coming from. So uh, these guys look matched up. I'm going to have uh, both of them essentially together on uh, my uh, my table that I uh, I have the the Patega Titan displayed 
already. And uh, looks like uh, the other dinos that's on that uh, platform with him are going to have to uh, find somewhere else to live because the Alamosaurus is definitely going to occupy that real estate. And if you've never been to a museum and seen a mount of a uh, titanosaur and uh, never really was able to appreciate the scope of the size, here you have a 135th scale human being right there. So um, that is uh, how large an 88 foot long Alamosaurus would be uh, next to a, uh, a human being. So, uh, wow. Um, and I can tell you this is pretty accurate because I have been in the presence of a titanosaur, the Patega Titan, uh, to be exact, at the American Museum of Natural History. And it's crazy because you'll walk into the Cerisian Hall. You know, one side as you walk in, the left side has uh, all the theropods. And then when you go, you look at the right side, they've got an Apatosaurus there. And uh, when you see the Apatosaurus, if you've never seen it before, if it's your first time, um, you'll be like, you cannot be serious. And then you walk out of that hall after viewing everything you can view, and then you walk through a couple other uh, prehistoric uh, halls, if you will, and then you roll up on, an, approach another hall, and there's this head sticking out of the hall, and it belongs to the Bottega Titan. You walk in there, and... They have an entire hall dedicated to the Bottega Titan and uh, trust and believe what you see right here in terms of the contrast between a human and the Alamosaurus. Oh, it's real. And it's worse when it's in the present, if, if a human being is in the presence of a uh, Bottega Titan. So uh, this is what you see. And for a bonus shot, we have from PNSO Cameron, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Now, it should be noted that um, these two uh, never met. Now, I know we've got some depictions of uh, Tyrannosaurus, uh, you know, uh, we can call it interacting with an Alamosaurus when it, I mean, it, it was a deceased one, but yeah, but um, it wasn't a Tyrannosaurus Rex. They may have called it that in the show that I'm referring to, but it wasn't a Tyrannosaurus Rex. What it was, was uh, at least supposedly, was another uh, species of Tyrannosaurus. Not Tyrannosaurus, but of Tyrannosaurus. It would be called Tyrannosaurus micriensis, I believe is how it's pronounced. But uh, that wasn't the Rex. Rex is a, a different species, and uh, but they were more or less the same size. And uh, there is a mount of an Alamosaurus next to a Tyrannosaurus. And uh, I've seen that mount, uh, not in person, unfortunately, but pictures of it. And this is about right when you look at the size differences between the two species. And now for our closing shot here. And uh, I don't know if you guys can see it. You're probably going to have to get right on up there. But I just noticed that there is a small hole on uh, the... Uh, lower uh, branch of that tree that you can put the pterosaur's uh, wing in to make it look like it's flying. So that works. I don't know if you could see it because it being white, it's probably washing out. But um, I figured I'd let you know that little tidbit. Anyway, uh, took some doing, but I managed to get this shot in. And uh, yeah, pretty decent. Anyhow, what do you guys think of the Howlin' Good 135th scale Alamosaurus? It's not truly 135. Close enough, though. Like I said, what uh, the size that it is is representative of an 88-foot-long animal. And Alamosaurus was purported to be uh, about 98 feet long. So, you know, that's uh, about another almost three inches that would have needed to be added to make this truly 135th scale still good enough. Definitely large. It's uh, Howland Good's uh, largest model to date. And according to them, there's more coming. So uh, you may as well just grab your seats because the ride isn't over. Um, comes in three different colors. You see the color that I have. Um, I don't know if 
it's still available with a base or not. I don't know if that was just, you know, just talk and um, it comes with a base no matter what, whether it was pre-ordered or an in-stock item. Uh, like I said, if any of you have this model and you purchased it after it went, uh, you know, after the pre-order period uh, came and went, let me know if you got the base or not, please, in the uh, comments below. Speaking of comments below, put down in the comments below what do you think about this model, Alamosaurus, and uh, what do you uh, think of um, having a, a sauropod, a titanosaur, in the 135th scale. Let me know your thoughts on that or anything else you want to talk about down there. Give a thumbs up if you uh, so please, and uh, subscribe if you haven't done so. Definitely do that. Much appreciated. And um, put, uh, if you want to uh, know when I upload another video, there's a bell down there. Hit that and you will be so informed. So, uh, yeah, that'll do it. Uh, very, very nice. What I'm going to do now, guys, is uh, clear that area I told you about so I can put that uh, Patagon Titan. And, yes, I know I'm going back and forth with Patagon Titan and Patagon Titan. It's all relative. I say it both ways because many people say it different ways, so I try to cover it all. Today, I was mostly using Patega Titan. It is what it is. And what this is, is the end. Thanks, guys. Take care. Peace.